Hello, Mike here. Now, I've just logged into the AWS console and I've gone to the billing dashboard and I've taken a look at my bill and everything looks absolutely fine, but there's some things in there that I'm not quite sure what they are. And so I decided in this video, what we'll do is we'll look a little bit more in depth at how to be able to figure out what's going on with your AWS bill inside of the AWS console. Now, you'll have seen from previous videos that I've put together that I have an AWS organization. Yes, it's just me. I'm just myself. I'm not a big corporation, but I still have multiple AWS accounts because that's a really good idea. And I've created them in an AWS organization, which is also a really good idea. And I've got SSO and I've got another video actually, which I'll link to on one of these sides. And you can take a look at it of my five top five things that everybody in AWS or everybody who uses AWS should do or should know um, to make your life easier. Those top five things include things like organizations, SSO and all this type of stuff. Um, I actually sat down today to extend out on that because I pr made a promise that if I found something new to add to that list that I would add that in. And that's what I came to do today. Um, but I got distracted by this billing stuff. And I, I really want to put something down in video form now to show you how you can get to the bottom of the details of your bill. Let's talk about this in particular. And by the way, I am still going to make that other video and I'm super excited to share that with you. It'll come um, a little bit later. Let, let's look at the problem from the billing perspective here. So if you have an AWS bill, which is at the top of an organization and you look at it, what you'll find is every single service that you've got there is listed out and you can see every single thing that you're doing. Let me jump into the console here. You can see my AWS billing dashboard for this month. Um, and if I go to bills on the top of the left hand side, you can see the bill for this current month in progress. So we haven't got to the end of this month yet. And um, from this drop down here, you can go back to previous months. Um, and here is the bill for this month. Now, um, it's not super high by every standard, but it's also pretty high from a individual's standard. So this is actually predominantly because I've got domain names which are renewing this month or they've already renewed. And so I've had to pay for those. Everything else you'll notice in the, in the bill, if you look on the right hand side is zeros. And that's because I'm super, super fortunate that my bill is paid for with AWS credits. And so you can see that there's a whole bunch of things here listed that are zeros. That typically means that I am using this service, but that it's zeroed out because of credits. Now, if I and what I do regularly is I'll just come and have a browse through here to see, well, what's costing those credits? Where am I spending those credits? Because it's still financial, right? I still want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. So I'll browse through here and you can expand them all out and you can uh, by clicking that button there. Why didn't that work? There we go. Well, come on. And if it's really big, it takes a long time. Um, and then you can sort of scroll through. It's still lots and lots of zeros, but you can scroll through until you find something that looks like there's some value associated with it. There, a dollar for CloudWatch. Um, and it's a dollar refunded because of the dollar spent down here in Ohio. Blah, you get the idea. So if you scroll through here and you look for things that are costing any kind of money and it's credits that come back, or in your case, you might not have credits, in which case it's something which is easier to spot. Um, the point here is that you get down to somewhere like, well, let's say this. So um, EC2, so Elastic Compute Cloud, I've got a $43 spend or thereabouts for that. Yes, it's credit offset, but still I'm spending that. And I scroll down here and it's like little bits of pieces here and there. And then I come across this piece here. Um, so in US East, North Virginia, US East one, um, I've got an EBS charge here of $11.80 or thereabouts. And so I can see the region it's in and I can see that it's GP3 volume, which is being used. So provision diops for a month with GP3. So there is this charge. And the question is, where is this? How can I actually find out where I'm actually using this? So, well, the thing you might think to do is, well, OK, well, let's go and open up a new tab. Let's go to EC2 um, and right click there. I'm going to right click open in a new tab. 
um, go, uh, well, I'm in EC2 and hopefully the dashboard will come up. I'll make that slightly bigger so you can see it still, hopefully. Um, but what you can see here is that they're in the resources list. There are no volumes listed there. And of course, if I actually navigate in there, there are no volumes there. Why is that? Well, I'm in the wrong region, actually. OK, let's go to the right region. Let's go to um, US East 1, which we were talking about. And you'll see the same thing there. There's still no volumes there because I'm in the organization management account where I'm looking at the bill. The bill's consolidated up to the top. Those EBS volumes are somewhere in the organization. How can we find them? Well, one thing I could do is I could log into every single one of the accounts and I could go to North Virginia EBS volumes in every single one of the accounts trying to find it. But that would actually take quite a long time and it would be quite annoying. There must be a better way. And yes, there is. Now, there are lots of tools that you can use for looking at navigating through and helping you manage costs in AWS. But this is something that you can do in the AWS console with everything that's already there. But it does take a little bit of digging, especially with credits, but also because we've got this organization set up. So let's have a look at what we can do. Let's scroll all the way back to the top of here. And I'm going to go to um, cost and usage reports. And from there, there's a link off to analyze your cost and usage with AWS Cost Explorer. That is something you could navigate directly to as well. This is just one of a couple of different ways that you can get to AWS Cost Explorer. So let's go into there and let's start digging around in here. Now, the Cost Explorer is super useful, um, but it is quite in-depth and quite detailed. So you've got to sort of know what buttons to press in order to be able to find this. So let's remind ourselves, I'm looking for a GP3 EBS volume, which is in, I know it's in US East 1, but I don't know what account it's in. And it's currently billing for this month at around about $20 from my recollection. All right. What can we do to find that? Well, let's first of all, um, with this Cost Explorer window here, I, I basically have all of these different controls that I can filter down on the costs. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the current month. So with the date drop down, I'm going to say current month and I'm going to click apply. OK, now I've got um, my current costs plus forecast costs for this month. Now I'm going to get rid of the forecasted values because I know that this already exists on my bill. So I don't care too much about the forecast. And also in my account with the way that it gets used, forecasts can be a bit, little bit all over the shop anyway. So if I come down to the bottom on the right hand side with advanced options, I can say uh, show forecasted values. I'm going to uncheck that box. And now I've got just one massive, great big uh, chart, uh, one massive, great big box here um, of costs for this particular month. Now, if I go down to uh, service, then I can see that all of those costs are for the registrar. Now, if you remember before, I said that this month I'd been renewing some domain names or actually automatically renewed. And so that's what that cost is. You'll notice that I've got that and I've got tax. I haven't got any other costs in here. And again, that's because it's credit funded. So if you're credit funded, you might even find that this is completely zero. So if you've got a startup and you've got some activate credits, um, how can I find out what I'm spending? Well, the thing to do is come across to the right hand side again, um, open up the more filters so you can see all of the different filter choices you've got here. And then from here, you can go to um, now I'm going to get this wrong. I think it's cost category. Uh, no, it's not. Let's go down again. It's charge type. Yes, charge type. And in charge type, you've got this option of credit. So I'm going to actually select credit. And then I'm going to go to the top right of this particular box here and say exclude only and then say apply filters. And so now I'm excluding any credits that are applied to this account. Fantastic. Now I've got a much more uh, granular breakdown, if you like, of what I'm spending for this particular month um, so far in my entire organization. And here it is split out. So I can see EC2 other is in here and EC2 other is basically as far down as we've got. It's not far enough yet. And I also don't know what account yet. Um, let's go and take EC2 other. I'm literally just going to copy that. I'm going to come over to the right hand side again. And this is 
pretty much all about how to use these filters, right? So I'm going to go to service and I'm going to paste into the top EC2 other because that's what AWS call it. I'm going to select that and click apply filters. So now I'm only looking at EC2 other, but I want to break it down, of course, into subcategory of EC2. So I can actually go to usage type at the top here. Um, so I'm going to group by usage type and now we can see a further breakdown and from here what we can see is I actually do have an EBS volume um, GP3. This here is the representation of the cost that I'm trying to find or at least the cost I'm trying to find will be part of this and it's this bigger chunk at the bottom here. So if I go ahead and copy this I'm going to go over to usage type on the side here I'm going to paste that into the top because it's much easier to paste it in than it is to type all these. There's so many different categories here and options here. So I've just pasted that in and it's got one here that matches that. So I'm going to click that and click apply filters. And again, we've gone back to 100% in this graph. But what I can now do is I can now click the linked account filter. And now I'm going to group this by linked account. Now you'll notice that here it's basically kind of stayed mostly the same and that's because all of these charges are all inside one account and I found it now. It's the one which is listed at the bottom here, Pixel Train 1. It's not actually what it's called but Pixel Train 1 will do for me. I now know which account that these drives are in or this cost is in and that's, that's another important thing here is we had a value there, that dollar value. We don't know how many drives, how long. It could be a squillion different drives that were up for, for just a second or it could be one drive that's been up the entire month. We have no idea at this point. All we know is about cost. This has allowed us to be able to explore the cost. It's Cost Explorer. But if I go and navigate to that account, so I'm going to use here a script that I've got which helps me just quickly navigate between different accounts. I talked a little bit about some of this in my five things you should do in AWS. This is actually the video I sat down to make now was in an update to that and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. So subscribe, uh, like, but also hit the notification bell so that you'll see when that video drops as well. Um, here in this account then, so this is a completely different account now, this is the Pixel Train account that we were talking about. If I go to EC2, and if I make sure that I'm in the right region, because I know this is in US East 1 and I am in North Virginia. If I go up to the dashboard here, um, oh, it's looking at instances for some reason, it's gone straight in there. I've got two Cloud9 instances that are currently stopped in this region. So this is me thinking this is probably what it's to do with. Um, let's go to EBS volumes. So if I go down to volumes on the left hand side here, and then there are two volumes here. One of them happens to be GP3 and it's this GP3 volume which is costing that money. So now I found it and if I decided that I wanted to get rid of it, I could. But I've gone from the top level, I guess, which is where we're looking at that bill. That bill, by the way, and why I go there straight away, so bills and then looking at it from this perspective, is because it's kind of fast. You can just sort of scroll through it and say, okay, what do I need to pay attention to? And I find this pretty easy. I, I don't necessarily find Cost Explorer um, to have the same kind of utility, if you like, from just a quick overview. But with Cost Explorer, well, you can do exactly that. You can explore the details of the cost and you can really drill down into it so that ultimately you can find the thing which is costing you the money and you can decide whether you want to keep it around or not and at least you know. And I could probably tag this instance at the very least with a name um, and I could also put some cost tags on there so that I get a better breakdown in the future and maybe avoid this kind of investigation. All right, well, I hope that was useful. I think it was useful for me just to record this one so that I can come back and remind myself how to do this, especially with the credit funding there and taking the credits away from Cost Explorer so that you can see what's going on. If you did find it useful, then please give it a like. Also consider following this channel, subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so that you get to see the video that I meant to be recording right now. In addition to that, follow me on LinkedIn. The details for how to do that will be in the description below this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.